We're going to go over some real basic uh, light types, how to set up some lights, and just in general how to get your final scene looking decent. This isn't advanced lighting by any means. I've got a scene here with two boxes and a ground plane in it. If I render this, you'll see that it's pretty boring right now. There's really no shadows. This is just the ambient light in the scene. And there's only three objects in the scene, my two boxes and my plane. So no lights, no camera, no anything else. I'm going to go ahead and start adding some lights to this. I'm under the Create tab and Lights. And we're going to kind of take a look at what some of these different lights will do real quick. I'm going to start with an Omni light. And when I create the light, it might get put in the middle of the scene or in the ground plane. In this case, I'm going to move the light around to the front. You can see it moving around there. And I'm going to put it in the front just off to what would be my right shoulder. And I'm going to move it up fairly high. And you can see if I render this by doing nothing else, I have lit the scene, but I really haven't improved off of anything that was already there. What I need to do, select the light, and we do this for every light, Go to Modify, and I'm just going to turn on Shadows. Now, right now I'm on Ray Trace Shadows. And now when I light it, I'll actually have some shadows. So we've now grounded these objects, which is important. It means that we've stuck these objects to the ground because they have shadows. Now, a basic light setup would be just what we did here. I'm going to zoom out here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to move this light pretty far away from those boxes. And you can see by doing that, I've changed the lighting a little bit, a little bit more like sunlight. All those rays coming from the Omni light are going to be a lot more parallel the farther away that they are. I'm also going to add one more light, and this is going to be a side light, because it's over here on the side. You can see that it's off to the side here. My other light is right over here and now I'm off to the side a little bit. So I, the new light's over here. The old light was over here. And under modify with that light selected, I'm going to leave shadows turned off. I'm going to go to intensity and color and I'm going to knock the multiplier down to 0.3 or a lower amount. And you'll see what happens is it kind of lights these back sides. So now I don't just have positive and negative space, I actually have some volume to the objects. And that's pretty much basic lighting technique. If I want to change the color, the back lights usually look pretty good as a lightish blue color, and the main light usually looks pretty good as a light gold or sunlight color. And now you can see I've tinted these, and that blue is actually tinting the shadows a little bit for, towards a cooler color. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these lights I just made. We don't need those. We're going to get a little bit more advanced now. I'm going to go back to my lights again. This time I'm going to use a target spotlight. I'm going to drag the target spotlight so that it's aiming right at my boxes. I'll need to move the spotlight itself up a little bit. There we go. And my spotlight right now, you can see if I render this, I'm going to get a real wide or overall lighting. I'm going to close down this cone a little bit, and I do that by going under Spotlight Parameters, and you can see the hot spot beam and fall off field. And I'm just going to close down that beam a little bit. Whoops, double clicked. I'm going to close down that beam a little bit, and under the fall off here, I'm going to close that down as well. And you can see now that I've highlighted this area. You can see this area back here. It's a little bit brighter. I'll close that down a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. And you'll see that back spot start to crawl in a little bit. Now I'm going to leave it on ray trace shadows again on this. I'm going to turn shadows on. That should mean that I see a shadow, which we do. You can see the shadows are really harsh, or like it's in the uh, evening. They're long shadows. I'm going to just go ahead and move my light up over my boxes and pull it back. The farther away it is, the more parallel the light will be. 
which should make for a flatter or more even shadow. And again, I'm going to go under lights. This time I'm going to use an Omni for my backlight. Pull that up. Move it far away from my objects. Backlights, the multiplier is going to be a little bit lower. This time I'll make it 0.4. And with shadows turned off, and I'll render it, and you'll see that now we've got some more volume built into our shadows. And that's actually a little bit harsh, so what I'm going to do is knock this one down to about a 0.2, I think. We'll render it again. That looks a little bit better. We have a little bit more contrast. Now, building on that, when you get three and even more lights in a scene, you have a lot more control. I'm going to add another Omni light over here to the side. So it's right here to the side. It's over in right in here in my scene. And uh, go under Multiply. This time I'm going to use a multiplier of 0.3 and a slightly different color. If you change the colors, you'll get a little bit more volume in your scene. And this time when I render it, you can see now that all these different sides of the boxes are starting to pick up different amounts of light. And so I'm getting darker shadows and the sides are different different values of gray, and the top is catching some of the light. So, Okay, let's go back into this scene. I'm going to delete these lights that I just made again, and we're going to try a different type of lighting in the scene. This time I'm going to use an area light. I'm going to use a, uh, or sorry, not an area light, a direct light. I'm going to use a target direct and I'm just going to drag out a direct light. Now this one looks kind of like a big beam of light when you see it. What this one's doing is light will be projected straight from this plane down in a straight line. It simulates sunlight really well. Sometimes we don't cover this in class, but we'll cover it here. Um, I'm going to go to the hotspot beam and I'm just going to broaden this out a little bit. We'll render that, see what we get. You can see it's like a spotlight, but make this beam really big. There we go. The big fall off. Except that when I add shadows, the shadows will always be straight. And that angle isn't real good, so I'm going to angle this around here. But that that angle of the shadows will always be straight, just like sunlight would. Still don't like that angle, so I'm going to move it more t right over the top of these boxes. There we go, that works. And I'm going to make the multiplier on this under intensity here. I'm going to make the multiplier 0.5. You can see that that's going to calm down that scene quite a bit. And then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add my other types of lights. Again, I'm going to add Omni lights. I'm going to add two Omni lights here. So there's one. This one is directly behind the scene. I actually want it to be a little bit more over here. And this one I want a little bit more over to my left shoulder. Pull that up. And under Modify, the multiplier on these is going to be pretty low. We're just kind of tinting the scene, scene with color. And we'll render that. And you can see that now we've kind of lit some of the sides of this, this scene. This light is a little bit, I think, too much on that side. Let's try that. Yeah, that's a little bit better. What we're after is differ, differentiating values in our planes. Now boxes are easy because we have one, two, three planes. But if this was a curved surface, you would want these to kind of differentiate from each other. You don't want them falling into just a big shape of solid color. And then that's basic good lighting. Um, I'm going to change the light type on my uh, directional light here. I'm going to change it to area or shadow maps, not area shadows, but shadow maps. I'm going to render that. 
And you can see now that my shadows got a little bit blurrier here. Shadow maps will do that for you. And I'm also going to real quick make one of my ground my ground plane a little bit darker here so you can really see what's going on. There we go. That probably helps a little bit better. Okay, and I'm going to go down to my shadow types, shadow parameters, shadow map parameters, this one. And I'm going to make the size a lot larger, 2048 in this case. And what you're going to see happen is see how that map tightens up. It still has a fuzzy edge to it. It might be hard to see. But it tightens it up a little bit. You can see that if I go to 1024 and render, it's going to be slightly fuzzy. So I'm going to put it back at 2048. And I'm going to bump the range up just to see what that does. And now you'll see that those shadows are a lot softer. And that's too high for my range. Knock it down to 20. See if that tightens it up a little bit. A little bit better. It's still a little too fuzzy. Go down to about 12. And that's a little bit better. And my bias, if I bump that way up, you can see that it won't really attach to the object very well. So I'm going to knock the bias actually down a little bit. And what that's going to do is kind of stick the shadow to my object a little bit better. Okay? So, that's kind of some basic lighting techniques. We're not going to get too much into lighting. You have a lot of lighting classes coming up. But that's a little bit more than what we covered in class. Now, I'm going to go over to my existing tank scene. This one, I believe it is. Okay, here's my existing tank scene. And I'll render this. Right now, it doesn't have any lighting in it. It's just default lighting. There's not, not very good lighting in there. You can see the tank doesn't even look like it's attached to the ground. Now, this scene's been lit a few times in different classes. Here's what the scene looks like with just some Omni lights and a spotlight. So that's pretty much what I just did here in the tutorial. Um, really nothing too fancy, but you can see there is a slight shadow down here which places the tank on the ground. It is directionally lit, so that gives the tank more volume. In other words, there are different planes have different lighting values to them. This is darker than this plane. That lets your eye kind of figure out the volume. And most of the small details, like here on the tread or right in here, are standing out. In other words, we can at least differentiate the small details from the shapes. Now, this scene here is the exact same scene. So nothing has changed modeling-wise. The lighting was done with a skylight, which I'll show you how to do. And it was done with HDRI lighting. Now, I'm not going to do the HDR lighting in this tutorial, but if you're interested in that, there is a tutorial in my Outbox that covers HDRI because I covered that in a different class. So we're going to light this scene a couple different ways. Um, jump out here where I can see what's going on. Here's my tank, just to get the layout of the scene. It's right there. There is a camera. This is a camera view that I'm looking through right here. And um, I'm just going to use these views to kind of lay out my, my view. This scene that we're looking at here, the viewer would be right here where the camera is. So that blue area right there. I'll zoom in on that for you. You can see here's the camera, there's the tank. So that's what I'm looking through in this view. Okay. Um, I tend to just lay these lights out pretty quickly. I'm going to do a target direct light over what is my right shoulder. I'm just going to drag that out. And then I'm going to move it up here. And so that's going to be at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It's just over my shoulder. And 
I need to fix the parameters on this light. I'm going to have this one cast shadows, shadow map. Multiplier is going to be at 0.7 because I think that will work better for daylight. The color is going to be a slight gold color, a little bit golder than what we used before. And I need to um, change my size of my cone here. Oh, that's the shadow map parameter, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> what I'm looking for, I'm in the wrong spot. What I'm looking for is this hot spot beam. And I'm going to pull the beam down a little bit so that the mountains will be a little bit darker as they fall away. Now I'm going to render this, just a quick render to see what it is I have. And you can see the difference there already in the scene. There we go. And you can see that we've already started to get some shadows working. It looks a little bit more volumetric. I'm still not crazy about that angle. I think I'm going to move the angle a little bit more over here. That should bathe this area a little bit more in light. And uh, now I'm going to go over here to add a few Omni lights. I'm going to add an Omni light back here in the back. So this would be back here behind the tank if you're losing track of where I'm putting these. I'm going to lift this up in the air so it's pretty high. High and far away will keep those light beams pretty parallel to each other. This one won't have shadows turned on. The multiplier is going to be 0.3 in this case. All I'm really trying to do is lighten the shadows. So the area, you can see here, this area here gets really dark. And now I've lightened some of these areas so that it's not so dark. I've lightened it too much. So I'm going to make this point 0.1. There we go. And I'm going to make the color a little bit more of a bluish color so that my shadows are a little bit cooler color. And there we go, yeah. Now you can see that I can still see into these areas that are shadowed, but they're obviously shadowed. And that's, that's what I want in general. I'm going to go back to my directional light and... Uh, for my directional light, I'm going to push the cone out a little bit more so that it lights the whole scene a little bit better. I still don't want those back mountains getting too lit, but you'll see a difference here in the back mountain area. As you can see it goes back a little bit farther. Still not far enough, though. Let's move that back. a little bit more. That should do it. Let's see if that helps. Any. There we go. That lights those back mountains a little bit better. And you can see it doesn't really change the shadows too much on our tank. Um, still not crazy about this particular light though. I think I'm going to move it a little bit more overhead. A little bit more like that, just rotating it around a little bit more, and um, knock this out a little bit farther, there we go. Okay, and what that's going to do, I think that's going to give me a little bit, yeah, a little bit more volume. So again, we're playing with the planes here on the tank, so it makes it look a little bit more 3D-ish. I think that will work. And uh, we could stop here if we wanted to. Um, what I'm going to do next is apply a different type of lighting scheme to this environment. So I'm going to um, delete the lights I just made from this scene. The lights I just made are a basic light setup, so nothing too wrong with them. But you can see I really don't get the nice, volumetric shadows back here in the back. It looks really flat where my ground is. Not bad, but I'm going to try and change that by making a slightly different type of lighting environment. I'm going to add a skylight to this one. Skylight's located right here. You just click anywhere in your scene. I like to lift them up a little bit, but you don't really have to. There we go. And I'll 
move it down here so you can see it in this viewport. That's what a skylight looks like. Now, a skylight rendered by itself isn't going to do much. It's going to wash everything out. In fact, you get almost a cartoon-looking effect with it. That's because it's lighting everything equally. We really haven't given the skylight any directions to go on. So I'm going to tell the skylight what I'd like it to do by going to Rendering, Advanced Lighting, Light Tracer. Click on that. This area here, you really don't need to do very much. If you want to change the color of the light, you can do it right here. I'm going to make it a slightly sunlight color. And that's about it. There is a global multiplier if you want to change with the multiplier here. But if I just close this, I don't even have to render it from here. If I just close this and then do a quick render, it will take longer to render. So it's going to take a second here for it to get fired up and, and start rendering. But what this will do is give us a nice soft lighting. Sort of simulates an overcast day. A little bit. Um, some people like this lighting, some people don't. I find that this lighting is a good way to base a scene, so start with this type of lighting and then work your way towards the omnis and the spotlights and the directionals to light the main part of your scene. And uh, as this, you can see it is slow, but I'll let this render a little bit here. And you'll get the idea. Okay, here's our finished render. And that took about, oh, I think that took about 12 minutes here on my computer. So I've got a lot of detail in this tank. But that was for one render. You don't want to do that for an animation. But if you're just rendering your single scene, you can see we have nice soft lighting. We have a little bit more volume back here in our mountains. Um, and... All that I've done to create from this to this is I've got the same skylight in there. I've also gone in and changed my blend properties so my ground looks a little bit better. I've added some Omni lights to highlight this side of the tank. So I've mixed the lights. I've also added a skybox. And I've applied an HDRI map to my skylight. That's what's actually giving me that that uh, bluish hue. The HDRI simulates real world lighting. So that's how I got to this piece here. Go ahead and try and texture your tank and see what you can come up with. Remember the final goal isn't an extremely well lit scene. It's just to get some lights in there so that it's a little bit better than the default lighting.